way he would have expected such a bad start. I know they had great plans at the start of the season, and there was noises coming out of United about the pre-season, but I think he would have been shocked how bad they've been in the last, in the first couple of games. So in one way, he's probably looking forward to the game, but he's thinking, I really need these players to turn up and give ourselves some sort of chance of winning a football match. Do you think that's why he agreed to do that interview, Gary? Perhaps to try and get that message across to, to the likes of you, but also to the wider fan base? I think so. Manchester United don't have a spokesperson at this moment in time. Um, and he's the only person, I think, willing to consistently stand up in this last few weeks. And well done to him for that. And I have to say that, you know, in terms of the questions we were asking him, it, this is the biggest crisis that Manchester United have been in for 40, 50 years in terms of ownership on the pitch, recruitment. It's never been as bad in my lifetime in terms of just generally sort of the feeling around the club. So I think he expected that we were going to ask him about these major issues like Ronaldo, recruitment, the Glazer family. You but know, is that tough for him, Gary, when those problems largely have not been of his making? Absolutely not of his making. And I said then, there, do you feel let down? He must feel so let down by the fact they've not got the players in to support what he's trying to do. It's terrible that they haven't got the players in for it. Gary, what we need to see as well, we, no doubt he's a brilliant coach, but this is where you need to see a manager's personality and his character. And we hope he's got that. No doubt brilliant on the football pitch. But sometimes a group of players needs a big personality to get a grip of the group. And that's the big question mark over him. Coaching, fantastic. But has he got that personality to get a grip of this group of players and sort them out? Do you think, when the, in the time that you spent with him, Jamie, that he sounded convinced about his footballing philosophy being successful over the long term? Well, I think he answered that in one of his questions. He was confident. He, he said it, it, his way works. Now, whether he gets the players in, you know, that's a diff diff different thing. You know, Manchester City and Liverpool at the moment are maybe the first destination for players. But he is very confident. But that's exactly how Klopp would be, Guardiola is, Conte is, Tuchel is. We've got the best managers in the world right now. And I actually asked him that question as well. Was that almost something to entice him to the Premier League or maybe think that'd be a lot tougher than maybe what it normally is? Because the best are here, and that's why it's going to be difficult, not just for him, for any Manchester United manager coming right now with this regime in charge, going up against Klopp and Guardiola and where those two football clubs are right now. Manchester United is a very, very difficult job for any manager. They've been doing it very slowly this summer, Roy. We've seen Casemiro here just around us at Old Trafford a few moments ago. Are they getting there in terms of their transfer business? Well, I think it's a good signing for him. They paid a lot of money. He's 30 years of age. You know, that was a five-year contract he's got. So if you're a player out there, Man United come looking for you, you know you're going to get a great deal. But Ooh. yeah, it's the start, but they need some more. They need more help. The problem is for any player coming to Man United now, as good as they are, they're coming into a bad dressing room. They're coming into a bad group of players because we've mentioned it before the last year or two. These players don't, they don't want to run. They don't seem like a good group. So that's a problem for any new player, however good they are. But what's the message that it sends, you think, when they are signing, a, 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 albeit a very good 30-year-old, on a four-plus-one-year contract on very big wages? They're desperate. They're desperate. But I think he is a quality player. Of course, you could look at the bigger picture and go, it's obviously, there's a lot of money. Again, long, long contract, a bit like Ericsson getting a three-year deal. You know, the agents out there must be delighted to deal with Man United, but when you're desperate, you've got to, you've got to pay over the odds, I suppose. You agree with that? Yeah, that, 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 that's why sometimes now I don't get as excited as I should do as a United fan about the signings that come in because I know that they're not actually part of the strategy at the start of the summer. Every other club's really precise. You don't see them bouncing around like a pinball in the transfer market for one player to another. It's De Jong, Rabio, and it ends up being Casemiro on a phenomenal contract that's going to cost the club £160 million. And I have to say, I think he'll do well for the club for a couple of years, Casemiro. But someone, in two years' time, is going to pick up a player that's going to be beyond his best years on £20 million a year that they can't shift. And that might be Eric Tan Hag, it might be a new manager, it might be new owners. So it is an element, there is a large element of desperation with the signing because a five-year contract for a 30-year-old should not happen.